best quality picture for the mission. And meanwhile, spacecraft in the inner solar system usually rely on the use of photovoltaic solar panels to generate electricity from sunlight. But on the Chang'e 2 satellite, a camera has been fitted to monitor the condition of the solar panels. Solar panels need a large surface area directed towards the sun as the satellite moves. They must be designed to stay in the direct path of the light rays no matter which way the satellite is pointing. A camera is therefore needed to check the position and can also take photographs of the Earth and the Moon. Older satellites were like people walking with their eyes shut, but that is not the case anymore as three small cameras have been fitted to Chang'e 2 to carry out health checks, as they say. Unlike the CCD stereo camera and also the panning camera which focuses on the moon, the three cameras keep track of the running of the satellite itself. One monitors the main engine and one the directional antenna and one photographs the solar panels. The satellite's engine is the heart of the spacecraft, providing energy, especially during change in orbit. A panning camera is also aboard the Chang'e 2 for the lunar probe mission. It will take photos as the satellite approaches the moon to assist the landing of its successor, Chang'e 3. And Chang'e 1's captured image three years ago of the moon, 200 kilometers from the surface. The latest mission will, though, see the Chang'e 2 satellite break 100 kilometers, the moon at the faster speed, and the lower orbit. At one point, the satellite will come within 15 kilometers from the moon. The panning camera will be used during this stage. The Chang'e 3 satellite is designed to automatically avoid areas not suitable for landing. In addition to keeping records of how the satellite approaches the moon, a major task of Chang'e 2's panning camera is to test out new technology. And it is also important to note that the Chang'e 2 satellite is equipped with a total of seven cameras. The lunar probe's main camera is a CCD stereo camera specifically designed for the mission. The CCD stereo camera has an optional lens which captures images. A CCD detector which transfers photographic signal into electronic signals. And a signal process system which inputs the signal for storage. It will take panoramic stereo photos of the moon using push broom imagery. And a line of sensors will be arranged perpendicular to the flight direction of the spacecraft. Different areas of the moon's surface can be photographed as the satellite glides forward to improve the definition of the image. 63 sensors will capture images of the same spot with time delay technology. The 96 photos will then be overlaid to produce a final image. The definition of images taken by the new CCD camera is 17 times clearer than the Chang'e 1's main camera. Wow, that's quite an improvement. But those are not all. The antenna of Chang'e 2 satellite provides a wireless path for data and signal transmission between the satellite and ground base on Earth. A camera has been fitted to monitor the antenna's operation as well. As the moon moves around the Earth and the satellite moves around the moon and spins, the angle of the antenna needs to be constantly adjusted to achieve that goal. The monitoring camera provides a super wide lens to monitor the antenna's movement. And Chang'e 2 will start its exploration of the moon and its surrounding environment as soon as it enters its orbit. Data can be temporarily stored in a large capacity memory until the ground can be detected again. At the other end, communication antenna on the ground locate the probe and send instructions and receive its data transmitted from 380,000 kilometers away. As the data sent back is a binary numerical system with combined symbols of 0 and 1, it has to be analyzed and translated before being restored into recognizable images and figures 
of the moon. Chang'e 2 will face many and potential challenges during the six month orbit around the moon, just like Chang'e 1, but this time maybe even more challenging. The lunar probe will have a, a shortage of sufficient power supply. In fact, during the eclipse, during the time the Earth blocks the sun's rays and prevented from providing energy to the solar power satellite, scientists will have to shut down some equipment to reduce power consumption to a minimum. Although the sun provides enough energy for the satellite, it can be also potentially hazardous. The sun's electromagnetic waves may sometimes disrupt satellite communication by downgrading signal quality known as solar outage. The solar storm also will create energy particles which may damage electronic components and even equipment on the satellite. So you see there is quite a number of challenges over there for Chang'e 2. The Chang'e 2 will have to endure as well extreme temperatures during its journey around the moon. In response, a special coat has been designed to protect the orbiting probe from disastrous temperature fluctuations. The golden cover wrapped on the satellite is made of special materials which help stabilize the moon's orbiter's temperature. The coat can deflect sun rays and also minimize Chang'e 2's heat absorption rate. And this will enable the lunar probe to survive high temperatures. The specifically made cover also retains warmth, which helps protect the satellite from extreme cold and temperature. And those are some of the characteristics of the Chang'e 2, which will guarantee it to be a very successful mission. But for now, let's go back to my colleague, Zoe. Zoe, back to you. Okay, thank you, Tian Wei, for your explanation. And now I understand why it is so difficult to get to the moon. So many tests and challenges for a pro program. And you're watching a special broadcast on CCTV News, Journey to the Moon. We'll be back in a moment. The next phase of China's lunar exploration project. The Chang'e 2 satellite prepares for liftoff. Closer, clearer images of the moon.